I think uh, ARM's momentum continues, and Google Cloud is now the last of, uh, or, you know, I think the, the last of the mega hyperscalers just to come up with their their version of an ARM-based instance. Pat? Yeah, so I had a, a kind of a snarky tweet um, that Google Cloud was last the party with uh, ARM-based public cloud instances, better late than never. I was just kidding, but, uh, you know, I was taken seriously. I had a couple people uh, messaging me. But uh, listen, I um, the fact is that, that they are last, right? We had um, AWS kick it off. Uh, we had Oracle Cloud. Uh, we had uh, Azure. Heck, even HPE uh, released or announced. It's not GA, and by the way, either is Google Tau. Uh, T2A instances, but still directionally, um, people find a requirement to do this. And it's interesting, this isn't about, about the ARM ISA, this is really about, um, uh, what's the right word? Um, this architecture was really built for public cloud instances, right? So first off, it took out anything that didn't make sense. and. You know, whether it's AVX 256, AVX uh, 512, maybe certain elements of security that are handled better in, in the offload. But one of the most interesting things, and uh, shout out to Ampere, who's the actual chip maker of, the, of this, is uh, one CPU equals one thread. And you, you might be thinking, well, wait a second. You know, with uh, IBM Power, you've got four threads uh, per per uh, CPU uh, with AMD and Intel, you get two threads per CPU. But what happens with cloud native workloads is they're looking for consistency of performance um, versus things like uh, turbo mode and uh, hyper-threading or, or multi-threading. So uh, ironically, having less threads per core uh, is actually an adder and it's something that they, uh, that they, uh, that they appreciate. So, um, I did finally get briefed yesterday, which which I appreciate this. There is some distinction between the AMD Tau instances and the Ampere ARM-based Tau instances. There aren't as many features with the Ampere Ultra, and I would say it's less um, um, enterprisey. So, you know, you, you can't run an SAP instance on on uh, the ARM instance because, quite frankly. It's very simply that SAP doesn't support ARM. Uh, and also, you know, there's a lot of pieces of software that, that don't support ARM. But if you have a cloud native, let's say using JavaScript, uh, there's almost no work that goes into uh, moving those over from, let's say, AMD or, or Intel instances. So uh, one thing I, I was super impressed with is they, act they actually had uh, customers or people who were using these instances to um, to talk about it. And I think it's important. Typically, an announcement, you won't have anybody talking about anything. It's basically just saying, hey, we're, we're going to do this. But I think Google had to do this because they were, like I said, the last uh, hyperscaler cloud provider uh, relevant. And I would say uh, large, I mean, IBM is relevant for a public cloud, but they are no longer trying to compete head to head with the uh, with the top four anymore. So there we have it. Congratulations to Ampere. Congratulations to ARM. And uh, I'm I'm really interested to see that we now have another horse race here. Right now, every single hyperscaler cloud provider has an ARM based instances, and heck, even even HPE does. Yeah, you didn't you, you didn't leave a lot there, so I'm not gonna dive too deep into this. What I'll say you've, is, you've written, you've written papers on uh, x86. I have and competition x86 and ARM, and I, I think uh, the listeners would love to hear kind of your thoughts on this. Well, there there's just certain workloads that are still some of the densest workloads in the enterprise that are still very x86 dependent, and until that changes, you're you're, you're going to continue to see x86 have a real <clears throat> meaningful place to play, both in the public cloud and obviously on-prem. The long and the short of it is, though, is that ARM's uh, doing two things. So one, it's, it's showing a very good competency and capability to offer hyperscalers something that they can deliver to their customers um, 
across the continuum, smaller businesses to enterprise. They're also, um, you know, playing the long game that the overall cloud market is growing. And so as we look at how and where all this growth comes from, uh, you know, AWS proved that there's a lot of demand and has done very well with their Graviton, uh, as well as with their AI instances, you know, Tranium, uh, Inferentia, and, and these other cloud providers realize that they need to be participating in this space. ARM has enabled this. And so, you know, we're going to watch the market continue to, to create more competition. And so the real question is, I think for x86 is it's about protect and about differentiate, find certain instances and workloads that people will continue to prefer to run on x86. And, and you know, we highlight a number of them in our most recent papers. Having said that, though, the ARM contribution should not be underestimated in any way right now. Usually, you know, you go, oops, one company got into the game. Oh, you know, maybe they're maybe they think there's an opportunity. Maybe they're 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 testing the waters. The fact that every one of these hyperscalers is playing in this game is because they know something. <laughs> and they know that this is a trend line that they want to be a part of. Yeah, um, you know, I'm wondering, Daniel, if this is a, like, a, is it a tweener to have an ARM-based uh, CPU that you buy as opposed to developing an ARM-based data center or SOC like AWS is, right? Like, are you really saving money? Are you really, like, like what, is, what, what are you really getting? And is is the lack of supply, let's say, for AMD and Intel contributing to that. I'm, I'm really thinking about the long game here. And I, listen, I, I don't have the answers. This is a real question, not a, not a fake question. Yeah, no, I, I think I think you bring up some really great points. Um, you know, the supply chain issues have caused market shifts for multiple companies. The ability to produce enough product has led people to other product. And as they've been able to utilize and fill gaps, they've stuck with those products. That is what happens. Uh, that's caused people to switch between PC makers, between server makers. And throughout this pandemic, companies have had to implement enough uh, compute. And if they couldn't get it from one source, they were figuring out how to get it and make it work from another path. And that's, it's been a, a, a very... Uh, the, the period's been an anomaly for, for many, but the fact is, as we come out of it, people change behaviors, and changing behaviors is often the hardest thing, and in this case, it was a forced behavior change. So I think it's just going to be something to watch, Pat, but the one thing I think people do want to underestimate as you see ARM come in is that this isn't like the death of x86. It's actually the growth of compute. So, you know, I mean, x86 has its challenges, and they're going to have to keep fighting, but the overall demand for the amount of compute out there is going up and it will continue to go up. 